Hi, my name is Pamenda and I am a PhD student at Cardiff University. Um, I am currently training to become a research scientist in the field of material science, which is, as it sounds, it's the study of materials um, into their various properties and just trying to understand the science of why they behave in the way that they do. So um, in research, um, in my experience, usually the research that you conduct is closely linked to um, industry. So usually we're approached by a company and they say, um, we're experiencing this problem. Please, can you find out why this is happening and offer a solution as to how we can stop this from happening? So, um, for example, in the past, I've worked on failure analysis projects with um, both the aerospace sector and also the construction sector, whereby they said, we've got this part that keeps breaking and we don't know why. Please, can you look into this for us? So then we go away, do some experiments, offer a scientific um, explanation as to why that's happening and then a solution as to what might prevent that from happening in the future. And that's really important because, especially in the aerospace industry, because it just makes everything much more safer because obviously you don't want things breaking sort of mid-flight, etc. Um, so I got into research sort of through my university career. I didn't really intend to be a researcher but um, I went to university to study material science and engineering. Um, I did my A-levels in maths, physics, art and sociology. I didn't actually quite get the grades that I needed for my university of choice, so I ended up going to Swansea University um, through clearing, which ended up being, you know, perfect for me. So I did quite well in my bachelor's. I went on to do a master's degree and then off the back of that I was offered a PhD to study um, the current project that I'm doing at the moment. So once I've completed my PhD um, I will actually be a doctor, so I'll have the title of doctor. Um, obviously I'm not a, a real medical doctor but um, I will have that title. Um, so. If you want to sort of go into research, it's not necessarily just the science-based um, disciplines that you can do that in. That does extend to pretty much any subject that the university offers. So, you know, arts and humanities, English, um, yeah, pretty much anything. Um, if you want to then progress on a career into academia, sort of post-PhD, so um, usually a lot of people after the PhD, they will either decide, yes, I want to stay in university and continue to research in this environment, or they'll then go out into industry and work for like maybe a company and either do a similar role or like a more um, like office desk based type role. Um, yeah, if you choose to stay in academia, Usually the progression is then to become a lecturer where you're then teaching university students and then you'll have like your own team of researchers that will do more practical research there as well. Um, a large part of that type of work is going to conferences so you'll be travelling sort of across the world really, um, meeting with other people doing the same sort of work and sort of forming collaborations and networks and stuff like that. So it's quite important to be a very social um, person that's able to create um, relationships with people that you don't necessarily know. Um, yeah, I mean, to do a doctorate, it does open a lot of doors for you. Um, a lot of people do completely have a career change after this. Like, for example, um, I know people that have done a doctorate in like chemistry and then they've gone on to work in advertising so um, yeah it really does al allow a lot of doors to be open 